I now have a DC to AC inverter constructed using IGVTs or insulated gate bipolar transistors. We have four transistors. The transistors have three leads. This lead is the collector lead. This lead is the emitter lead. And the lead on the left is the gate lead. It is the control valve for the transistor. Think of this lead, the gate lead, as a as a uh, handle on a faucet. You open the faucet and current flows through the collector emitter. This particular device is a voltage control device. It uses what's called field effect. So if you have a voltage pulse at the gate lead, current will be allowed to flow through the collector emitter. Now, there is a diode connected in reverse bias. We are going to call it a freewheeling diode. If the current or voltage rises at the emitter lead above the operating voltage of the unit, current will be allowed to flow back onto the bus. You will see why we need those when I discuss the three phase inverters. They're very important. They do not conduct under normal conditions. They are a blocking diode most of the time. Now, back to the gate lead on the IGBT. The gate lead is controlled by a clock in this case. So the clock just turns on and off and on and off, allowing current to rush to, sorry, allowing current to flow through the load and then it stops flowing. And then it starts flowing, then it stops at a very predefined time. So if I look at this clock, I'm gonna double click on it. It has a frequency of 60 hertz. So it operates 60 times a second. The duty cycle is 50%. It's on for half of the time and off for half of the time. And this clock turns on instantly without delay. It has a delay time of zero seconds. I will explain what that means. So, okay, so let's have a look at these clocks. So clock one works with T1, which pushes current through the load. Clock four works with T4, which pulls current through the load. Clock four is set to zero seconds as clock one is. So that clock one and clock four pulse positive at the same time. So current will flow from the bus through transistor T1, through the load, through uh, transistor T4, and back to the supply. Okay, now let's look at T2 and T3. If you look at the clock on T2, it is delayed by 8.3 milliseconds or decimal 0083 seconds. That is half a cycle or one alternation divided by two. Just remember that. I will show you that in a minute. Now, up here at clock three, I'll double click on it. It has the same time delay as clock two. So clock three and clock two operate at the same time. So T3, transistor T3 will turn on, current will flow through the collector emitter on the transistor, through the load, through the collector emitter on T2 and back to the supply, okay? So one and four work together and three and two work together. Now what we're going to do is connect an oscilloscope and have a look at our waveform. It will be a square wave output. Now let's, uh, while we're at it, we're going to hook up what is called a frequency generator. Sorry, frequency counter. All right, so we'll run it. And that is our output. That's what the load sees for voltage. Positive, negative, positive, negative. 
and you can see the load sort of flashing this does not simulate in real time so that's square wave inverted AC coming off a DC supply now I'm going to click on the uh, frequency counter I have to set it to AC coupling and it's operating at 60 Hertz what you'll notice when we start working with the three phase inverter we can adjust that to control the speed of the motor and you'll see how that's done okay so for reference so we know what that decimal 0083 seconds means I am going to connect an AC power supply to channel B of this oscilloscope and those two waveforms should be an exact synchronization so I'll go ahead and run it now you're going to see a red sinusoidal waveform and you'll notice that it breaks the zero line exactly where the square wave does and it drops below the zero line ex exactly where the square wave does so what we'll do is we'll measure it if I put the cursor right at that point where it breaks that's cursor number two and I move cursor number one over to where the cycle starts so I'm measuring a cycle oh that's really close it's actually okay so if we measure T, T2 to T1 it's 16.7 milliseconds that is 1 divided by 60 that gives us our period now if I move the cursor over we can find out what one positive alternation is it is 8.37 it's you can it's very hard to get it super accurate with these cursors 8.27 so let's call that 8.3 that's why we set this clock to zero sorry decimal 0083 and this clock to decimal 0083 to produce that 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 um, square wave AC output I'll just delete uh, delete the AC and run it one more time and that is your inverted AC output and we can filter that on the output too okay but that's that's the the basic output from the inverter and then you can clean it up after that okay now we'll move on to the three phase inverter